Hello, good morning. I hope you are fine. Happy New Week. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Matthew, the Apostle who wrote the Gospel according to St. Matthew, which is the first book in the New Testament. I have often wondered, why does God choose imperfect people? Have you ever looked at the leaders he chooses in his church? Just look around you. Most of the people that God to whom God entrusts his kingdom are just ordinary people like you and I, people who are not perfect. And when I was younger, I used to wonder why God wasted his time on such people instead of just choosing perfect and good and virtuous people to advance the cause of his kingdom. Well, maybe we have some kind of response in today's readings. Our first reading today is taken from Ephesians chapter 4 from verses 1 to 13. That is St. Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. So to that church, St. Paul very clearly indicates the first thing I'd like to share with you this morning, that God calls every member of the church to a specific vocation and then says live lives that are worthy of your vocations god is constructing a building and he cannot use only pillars for his building he cannot use only roofs for his building he cannot use only blocks for his building so god chooses different people for the different areas of his church where he needs people the world needs different kinds of people we are not supposed to all be teachers or all be apostles or all be prophets so the reason god chooses some people we call imperfect or sinners is because they are not like us and where we are going to be useful is not the same area that such people are going to be useful the fact that you are good at teaching does not mean you're going to be good at singing the fact that you are good at singing does not mean that you're going to be good at counseling so god chooses people for the different needs of his church that's one reason why you might think that someone is not perfect judging by your own area of perfection so God knows the various areas of perfection that each one has and then calls each person to that specific vocation. Now the second thing I'd like to share with you this morning is found in the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 9 from verses 9 to 13. It's actually the call of St. Matthew. Jesus was passing by and Matthew was in front of the tax collector's house. Remember, he was a tax collector and in those days tax collectors used to collaborate with the foreign oppressors to exploit their people and so they were hated as public sinners yet jesus called him and he immediately he got up and followed jesus and of course matthew was also a rich man who was a learned man and he invited jesus to come and eat in his house as they were eating other people came the likes of matthew you know scholars and rich people whom generally most people considered to be sinners and so people began to complain. If Jesus were a prophet, how come he goes to eat in such an imperfect person's house, in such a sinner's house? And then Jesus understood what they were thinking and said to them that he had not come to call the righteous, but he has come to call sinners. And then he gives the example of saying that, listen, a person who is well does not need the doctor. If you think you are perfect, then you don't need Jesus. You don't need God. And the doctor only comes for, for those who are sick. So he has come, not for the righteous, but for the sinners, for those who admit that they have a problem. So if Jesus is a healer, it means that we have to recognize that we are all sick in one area or the other. The Bible says that he who says he has not sinned calls God a liar. Because God could not have sent a doctor to save all of us if we were not all sick in one way or the other. So thinking that we are the perfect ones and others are the sinners is one way to deceive ourselves and call God, call God a liar. So Jesus comes and he has come for all of us because we are all sick in one area or the other. So Jesus has come to heal us because we are sick. And the final thing I'd like to say today is that Matthew went on to write the first book of the New Testament. Of course, scholars can argue whether he wrote before Mark or he wrote after Mark. I think he wrote after Mark, but that's not important. What's important to me this morning is that his book is the first book of the New Testament. While we can see his part, his imperfect part, or his, his part of being sinners, we should also see the part of his being a scholar of being able to put down for his community those things that Jesus taught and lived. So thanks to Matthew's talent of writing and telling stories, today we have a, almost a full copy of the life story of Jesus Christ. So child of God, the reason God calls imperfect people in our estimation sometimes is that we do not correctly estimate their competencies. Those people that we are considering as imperfect, we are only looking at the bad side or the weak sides of their lives. 
Meanwhile, what we don't realize is that those same people have strengths and uh, talents that only God can see. And it is because God only looks at the bright side of things that he calls such people into his vineyard. So today, child of God, I pray for you that you will continue to do what you are doing. Keep going. Even though you have weaknesses, just know that God is here to heal you. Jesus is present to heal you of your weaknesses, even as he is using your talents to bless his church and to bless the world. We don't mind God bless you and bless this new week. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.